I am tired. The energies are a lot these days in this scorpionic um, realm that we're in. I can feel the death. I can feel the death. So I'm aware that the rebirth is coming. It's right behind it. However, I am in the depths of death. And it's making me think about, um, medically, they say that a person, the last sense that they lose just before death is hearing. So they can still hear you um, just before they, they pass over. And so I've been sitting still as still as possible so that I can hear what it is that I need to hear because I know that I'm going through a death and rebirth process. I know that I am. Um, Things have resurfaced for me in which of who I whom I'm, I used to be. And it has been expressed that an individual, a loved one of mine, actually was holding on to resentment towards me because of a decision that I made that ultimately affected him. And... I was and I still am grateful that he was able to express that to me and we talked it through. But it was hard, it was heavy and it was hard. I was viewed as um, pretty much being selfish because I, the decision that I made in the past, which was about three years ago, yeah, almost three years ago, the decision that I made um, was a form of self-love for myself. And I do understand that when you make decisions that are best for yourself, a, a, there's going to be some people that are unhappy about that because they're not going to get the same version of you. Life changes, energy changes, you know, and I end up over and understand that. However, I knew that if I didn't make that decision and go for it, my life would never change. That's how serious it was. My life would have never changed. And that decision was as way I am now to migrate, uproot, move myself and my children to this country. Um, as I stated before, my mental health and my overall well-being just was, I didn't feel safe. And I'm, I have a very high awareness of feeling safe goes beyond just physical I didn't feel safe in my environment I didn't feel safe within myself Be for many reasons and I needed a, a peace of mind I really did but I also made a made that decision with knowing that I needed a peace of mind and that I wouldn't be able to heal properly in the same environment that actually contributed to my overall dis-ease. Um, 
that I wasn't just running away from what made me sick that I was going to follow up making this decision and being here and doing the work doing the work because I can easily bring the same energy and energies within myself here and perpetuate the toxic cycles you know so with that came even more changes and right now well it hasn't been easy and it hasn't been comfortable for me myself nor my children um, I could wish all day long that I had it all together that I didn't have to make that decision however I'm very proud of myself I feel very courageous for doing so even though I knew that it would ultimately affect how they feel how they view me but I do have foresight and I know that we all had to sorry <laughs> we all had to experience I don't even know what to call it, just like death. We all had to experience death within ourselves, within our circumstances, within our lives in order to actually grow outside of the bubble that we consciously and subconsciously created for ourselves. And as a parent, I it's my duty to do something about the things that I am aware of that I have control over which is myself and I was hyper aware that I had a lot of healing to do and I wasn't able to do that in the same environment nor in the country like you know like I really my overall purpose is to thrive I've spent I've mastered surviving and that's nothing to brag about you know I've just I, I didn't have a choice and when I actually, I mean, to a certain extent, I had a choice. We always have a choice. But once I was aware, um, I have to be honest, I didn't make that choice to get myself out of survival mode. I found ways to pretty much like coddle it. I, I don't know, make coddle it. Like, I was perpetuating it, just lying to myself because of the comfort zone that I created. And that comfort zone was beautiful. It was actually beautiful. It was blissful to an extent. I, I, it's, it's, a, it's a knack of mine. I know how to... I'm, I'm, I'm home within myself, so I know how to make anything outside of myself feel like home. And I thought at the time, like, as long as I stay in my apartment, like, that, even that sounds crazy, but to an extent, like, it just sounds a little crazy. But um, as long as I stayed in my apartment and my apartment was so homey and comfortable, um, 
for not only myself but my children everything would be okay but everything wasn't okay it's like why why is the only place that i feel comfortable safe without dealing with anxiety and just bullshit and low vibrational things and people the only places in my home that's a problem and I was being in America I was able to even though I'm just I was living in New York City I was able to not only see the bigger picture within my own life but I could see the bigger picture within life itself being in that country I feel a lot of citizens or not even not just citizens or just people that reside in America share a lot of concerns and worries that probably we also do share the anger, resentment, frustrations along with those awarenesses, concerns and worries. And I feel like the bottom line is the only thing that we can control in life is ourselves. And making a list of pros and cons about geared towards my own well-being and being in that environment, not just in that city and state, but that country. I chose myself and I can only control myself. So I removed myself from it. So going back to it affected my children. Um, my son feel, felt, you know, I could, we talked about it, so I could say that he felt that I only was, I was only thinking about myself. I was not thinking about them at all. Um, And overall, I was just being selfish and, you know. But isn't that the job of a parent? You know, we protect them from the act, from the things that are actually like the realness of of the world. Protection. And, Protection is shown and felt in different forms. And I'm a true, I've been a mother for, I've been a mother of my own children for 20 years, almost 21. I've been a mother, I experienced mothering at the tender age of 13 to my little sister. And one understanding which I feel is the wisdom that I've uh, uh, the, some wisdom that I have about being a parent, a mother is The overall happiness of a mother will reflect through it through their children. It will reflect through their children. I, I saw it in real time. I was the child of an unhappy parent, mother specifically. And children feel that. They may not know where it's coming from, but they feel it. And it affects them. And I'd rather the decision that I made to uproot us and replant us 
and fertile ground with new seeds is the best decision because I can foresee my happiness and us thriving together. And although there's upheaval right now, like tower moments happening and the, the death process, we're still thriving. We're not surviving. There's no way we would be able to have this conversation with who I was at that time about these things. We're thriving. I've reached my goal. When it comes to the type of relationship that I want with my children, I'm not controlling it. All I'm doing is controlling myself, my mind. And I'm flowing with things. That's why I've been blessed to actually reap the benefits of the scorpionic energy now in its time. So it's not that bad. <laughs> It's not that bad because even within the death, like the rebirth sometimes is coming right afterwards. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for it. I've been really pouring into myself and that's transforming me and not only do I have to get used to the new versions of myself my children have to get used to the new versions of myself and I know that's not easy because I now show love in unfamiliar ways um, my protection is expressed differently. My love is expressed differently. Um, I express more boundaries, which you know that's not comfortable for people that are used to a people pleaser. Um, even this moment right here, like I'm choosing to share this moment with you guys, but this moment right here is me pouring into myself, being able to freely express myself, being transparent and vulnerable to myself. <gasps> Excuse me, sharing it. Um, instead of just going straight home and doing the mundanity, which I don't mind doing the mundanity, even that I'm grateful for because I, this been just this has been so many changes recently and for almost for just just touching a year just under a year I was not home in the evenings for three nights a week and that was actually making me I was working and that was actually exhausting me. And I was aware of that, but I found myself because it was it triggered this this um aspect in me to to continue it and be in um, survival mode. Uh, being honest, like um, and I noticed that. Why, like I, I know that I'm, I'm doing the work, even though I'm working, and I was still, I'm still continuously doing the work, and I noticed that I was changing, but there was like some kind of uncomfortability, discomfort 
with the relationship with my cho- me and my children. And I wanted to get deeper. I wanted things to transform, plain and simple. And I realized that in order for, for things to actually transform, I needed to rest. I needed to properly and intentionally rest. I needed to, in order for me to even begin to have a healthy relationship with them, uh, a more evolved, health, healthy relationship with them, even during a transitional stage. Because if I'm not rested, my patience are gonna be, is gonna be short. We're gonna, it's not, we're not gonna be able to communicate properly, or rather, I won't be able to communicate properly. So I, I stop working in the evening, and money is tight. But I choose, I because I've chosen myself over and over. It's easy for me to choose them without sacrificing myself. That, that's the overall point i am not the sacrifice this is what i've learned thus far which has helped me to be the the better version of myself i am not the sacrifice i don't have to sacrifice myself to have the things in my life that i deserve and want i'm worthy of it i am the altar I have to pour into myself. I have to give libations to myself in order to receive the abundance that is my birthright. I finally got it. It finally clicked. So, yeah, I'm not the sacrifice. So I stopped sacrificing myself and which allows me to pour into myself which in turn allows me, my cup is is over is overflowing. So I have the space to pour into my children in the ways that they actually need it, not the way that I want to. I communicate with them to see what is it that they actually need, so that I can pour into them. And help them become aware that they can they can too pour into themselves. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm going through the motions of the scorpionic energies. I'm, I'm sure we all are in our own ways. Is showing up differently in our realities um, but just be aware of how it's showing up for you so that you can do something about it when it comes to self because once you work on yourself when it comes to these outside circumstances these outer circumstances you'll be able to flow through the transitional stages of the tower moments. These tower moments are, they're here, I'm hearing that they're here to clear the path for you so that your rebirth process can be felt can be felt not realized sometime after it happens like oh yeah I'm in a new state of being I'm, I'm actually come very far like be in the process like feel your way through that process of, of birthing because you're going to birth something new too Everyone around you is going to be affected by your rebirth, which is a beautiful thing. 
and yes they may feel like they're dying <laughs> like the world is ending for them and it probably is i mean essentially it is the old is dying off so the new can be in existence but not everybody is welcoming of that kind of energy and that's okay sometimes we have to be picked up and placed in those type of energies because we'll we, we'll never move we'll never move uh, I see this statement online a lot about how a person is think, thinking um, thanking God the universe for ending things that we we thought they thought that they wanted because they would have never left it they would have never let it go and they wouldn't be the versions of, of themselves that they are embodying at this present time and sometimes we need that you know and that's okay it's actually a blessing to feel pain some people don't understand that nor do they see it and want to understand and see that but pain is a blessing because if you can feel pain and then you get to a point where you don't feel pain and you, you still have a pure heart you didn't allow that pain to harden your heart I told my daughter this yesterday actually um, the joy you, you're going to feel on the other side of that pain is going to be just as powerful, just as deep, just as intense and immense as you felt that pain. It's a spectrum. It's a spectrum. Which is why we turn, it's how you turn pain into power. Turn your pain into power. When you pop out and it's like, yeah, nah, I'm not, I'm not sad anymore. I'm not depressed anymore. I'm not, I'm better. And maybe you are still sad. Maybe you do are still angry about something, whatever it is. But you're, you're better than you were. You're not where you started. That's a blessing. That is a blessing. It's a testament to the strength that you have. It's a testament to the power that you have. It's a testament to the favor that you have in your life. I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for all of it. All of it. All of it. So remember, you are not the sacrifice. You are the altar. Pour into yourself so that your cup overflows and you'll be able to pour into others and your cup will still be full. And receive the joy that you're gifted and gift others joy. Chucking up the deuces. I love you. Be blessed. Stay blessed. Have a great day.